A big shout out goes to Maxis Tires, Jensen USA, and Fox Shocks for supporting the inside line. Welcome mountain bikers. It's been a year since we've heard the news that Warner Brothers Discovery were taking over World Cup downhill broadcasting in place of Red Bull. This last World Cup that happened in Mount St. Anne this weekend, Vital Man at Large, Jack Rice, hit up elite racers, junior racers, team managers, mechanics, to see if they thought downhill was in a better place than it was last year. We've got Bernard Kerr, Loic Bruni, Nina Hoffman, Wynn and Eddie Masters, just to name a few. They all let us know what they think. These are just audio interviews, so we've slapped Pit Bits photos and G-Out Project photos for your viewing pleasure here on YouTube. You can listen to this on your favorite podcast app, too. Just search Vital MTB. Hope you're having fun out on the trails, and enjoy the show. Vital MTBers, I'm here with none other than Bernard Kerr. So you especially, I've wanted to ask this question. Um, this series, last year compared to this year, what immediately comes to mind? Yeah. Yeah, um, what it. immediately comes to mind running a team is we spent loads more money registering it. And not a lot's changed, and if anything, it's gone backwards. We obviously have the semi-finals this year, which I personally, as a manager and a rider, I'm not a fan of. I think it drags on, it dilutes the racing, dilutes the content, and is unexciting to watch. And as a rider, it's actually not as bad as a rider, I think, as a fan, but as a rider, it's, it's a lot, it's intense, especially last week. Um, the speed's so high now, and uh, at Snowshoe, you are risking it, man. You're like pinned through those rocks, it's dangerous, you're risking it you're sprinting it was pretty hard to do two runs yeah and i think a lot of the top guys we stopped pedaling um 100 meters before the line we everyone stopped pedaling and just coasted to the end in semis which is pointless that's not even racing then so yeah. why do we have semis we get paid the same prize money as before which is dreadful i got 449 dollars for fifth last week Whoa. which is insane considering our fees have gone up huge they or consider, I mean, compared to something like the, you know, a different race series that provides. Yeah, you got Hardline, you got Crankworks, you've got the US Open was 15 grand for the win. Yeah, World Cups is tragic, and especially how much they are charging teams to register. Yeah. We're paying to be here, right? Which is crazy that we pay to turn up. We're part paying to put the show on. We have no choice, no say. Yeah, and no, uh, yeah, I feel no like say, we're not very respected, if I'm honest, by the series. Yeah. Just from my personal opinion. Yep. I don't think we're very respected by them. And um, that's that. Course marking this year, got to give it to them. I way prefer the cool little smart poles over the tape. They're cool. I'm a huge fan of those. At Red Bull Hardline, we haven't had tape barely ever. So, yeah, I wasn't worried about not having tape, and I'm a huge fan of not having tape, to be honest with you. So that's one amazing change they've done. Great. Um, what do you? How do you see it going next year? <laughs> not good. I hear big rumors of only being elite teams, us getting charged more money, yeah, us same. having less say. So. Same, same hopefully this isn't true and hopefully the team managers and the riders will club together because we have power in unity yeah. so hopefully we unify and we can make the sport be better not just for money reasons but for like cool like we all love racing and i want it to be an inclusive great sport it's not f1 there is 60 good guys here yeah. the guy that won last week was on plate 42 right and i think trying to make it as elite as i've heard the current promoters want to you're going to get rid of a lot of that and it's going to ruin it yeah absolutely. you know it's taken me a lot of years to be good and consistent so yeah i really hope we can unify Do and you... have constructive chat to not let that happen yeah and i don't want to i don't want to ruin because this is so far a great interview um I don't, would it be like constructive to like try to have like a, a summit or like a riders meeting or like a some type yeah, of we've, thing? Yeah, we've had a couple all... this year. Oh, we've had okay. a couple. Did and you? I think we need to keep building on that and make it better. And I think we need to, we need to voice our power more without us. The series has nothing. Nothing. And I think the riders need to join together and show without the riders, there is no series. Exactly. And we have a lot of power with that. And I think the riders need to remember that and not be scared yeah. by big powers or people with money or suits that scare people yeah. because we love the sport i want to be out here hanging out with the fans having a beer with the fans if we can and just having an awesome race series so i think we need to uh, put our foot down and say what we like what we believe in and what we think is good for the sport and not just for money wise you know it's not just what we think is good for the sport for money yeah. it might be good for the sport because we all enjoy it it might be good for the sport because it's a good atmosphere. It might be good for the sport because more people get out on bikes. It doesn't all need to be for money. Right. We might lose 10,000 TV viewers, but the fans are way more stoked. The riders are more stoked. So who cares? It's not yeah. all about money. It's about making the sport what, what we all like, what we want it to be, in, and why we came to race bicycles in the first place, I think. 
Vital MT Beers. I'm with none other than Loic Bruni. Uh, Loic is basically the poster boy for downhill mountain biking um, and has all the experience in the world. Loic, I'm interested to know uh, your thoughts on how this season went uh, as to past seasons. Are you talking like personally or? Personally. Personally, this season actually is pretty good. Yeah. I feel like I've had a different type of off season as I broke up with the ex. Yeah. Uh, different lifestyle, way more loose, a little oh. bit more on my own, like doing my own program, which was really refreshing mentally, but not so good for training sometimes. So I was a bit curious to see how it would go and um, super happy with most of the races. I have really a little dark spot with Val Sol. Don't know what happened there. Went pretty much down every run. But uh, really happy of the way I adapted to the new format, to the new bike, okay. to everything. And uh, even though I had some really good races and bad races, like a bit inconsistent, I'm really happy to be still leading the overall coming to the last race. Yeah. I don't know what will happen, but it's still a good position and it's a lot of positive to be fighting at the top like this, so yeah. stoked. It seems like you're in a good spot and I mean the track here looks, I, I mean, just looking at it, it looks like you guys are all having a blast. So, For sure. Yeah. Nah, the track is a good one to finish it off. Yeah. Uh, super difficult though, yeah. especially for the bikes to handle all the, the big hits. So right now it's actually going to be taking a lot of maybe smartness, intelligence in, try, in trying to preserve the bike also uh, and trying to go fast and preserve the bike because I can go f so fast but yeah. I don't make, make it to the bottom so it's yeah. really really because tricky. of like a flat yeah or because like flats mechanical. because chain rings being bent because uh, like so many things that the bike is struggling to handle it's so so violent yeah okay while I got you here um, and, and like we kind of talked about if we bring up stuff uh, you don't want to talk about that's fine um, but I wanted to get your take on how you have you, you brought up the schedule the new schedule how have you how have you thought that they've done this season and going into next season do you have a positive outlook um, a negative or in the middle I'm curious to um yeah, I feel like it was tough for them this week, this year, sorry. Yeah. They they took the spot at a really good s spot and they almost only could fuck it up because it was uh, really well run by Red Bull. Yeah. But they did a really good job in trying to listen a little bit too late yeah. in the year, but trying to listen to what riders and team managers had to say. Yeah. Always trying to adapt, be flexible with the schedule, with what people were saying, giving us feedbacks and stuff. So yeah. they've been unlucky a little bit in Loudonville and Andorra with the weather. Yeah. So they had so many people just criticizing their yeah. decisions. But when you when you make decisions, you always get people that yeah. will talk, talk on it positively or negatively. So I'm trying to stay open-minded. For sure, there's some things that I wasn't so stoked on. Like for me, downhill doesn't need a semi-final. Uh, all the build-up of the one shot, the one peaking intense run at the end of the weekend, we yeah. don't need to do it twice. Right. Especially that we don't gain anything from it. Yeah. It's more fatigue, more risk. I mean, you're really, nothing else yeah. more than that. Like we don't get more consideration or more money from anyone. No. Or rewards, you know. It's like, oh, there's some points, yeah, sure, but it yeah. doesn't really matter. Right. So, but I think they've heard that most people were not stuck on it, and they just want to make sure that the transition will be smooth because I have the feeling that we'll be third in finals next year mm. without semifinals. Yeah. So they just want to make the sport a little bit less crowded. Okay. Uh, but also, I think they're trying to develop other races, other series and stuff, uh, to allow like the over 8,500 guys to race there and kind of shine on these races oh. and have like exposure and prize money at these races that we cannot go to. Okay. So it kind of like dispatched because there's too much people at the moment. Yeah. Like the tracks get fucked. We're waiting a lot. 400. The pits look like shit. Yeah. Like yeah. there's too many like gypsies 
to set up. Like, <laughs> I understand, like, they don't have money. No, I get it. Like, the budgets are so different, but where we want to take the sport, we need big teams, big budgets, and those guys that are really good and improving every year yeah. need to take that time and need to take other races. Yeah. It's not World Cup, it's not the, the only thing, you know. There's right. so many good races in Europe, in the US too. Yeah. And I feel like if they make sure those type of races are... Uh, televised like broadcasted and well funded and well like well organized and with prize money yeah that would be sick and then we can have like the best 75 80 guys battling and then 30 guys going to finals and basta you know like what do you think about i talked to aaron a little bit what do you think about them running the 60 guys and only televising the 30 would that be a compromise or do you still think that that, that 30 would be I don't see like I think it's nice for the from 31st to 60. Okay. But I don't see why we should okay. because I really like I grew up like racing shit races, regional, national, like yeah. all, all of the races I could. And so many people do not even go to these races and they will go there and be beaten by you know like the level is good already there. Yeah. But they don't go enough to small races. They only they dream too big, too early. Uh. And I feel like yep. we don't need that. So 30 is already a lot of people. Yeah, It's not a lot, but it's already like to watch a full live, it's quite long. Yeah. So if we want to reach more random guys that don't know anything about biking, if we want to reach more sponsors, more, I think, and I'm convinced that it is the way. Yeah, okay. But for sure, for the sport, it kind of takes the intimacy and the prox- proximity yes. away. Yeah. Totally but understand. at some point, the sport's growing. At some point, it will happen. Even us, like me and Leger, or maybe Dak in America, sometimes you have to protect yourself because people, more and more people ask you things and want some of your time, and it's it's too much. Then, so, like as the sport grows, I think it has to... It, we need to keep like the DNA a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But it's okay to also like move forward even oh, if yeah. it's like a relationship yeah sometimes you, yeah, yeah. you take a decision that's not super nice and it might end up in breaking up yeah but it's better the best for both of us you know? yeah oh both of us that's <laughs> that you you just put it I, I haven't heard anyone put it that way but that makes the most sense that i've heard yeah because it's a compromise you it know is. and and, and, and we're if, mountain bikers and we hate and we don't like change it's pretty obvious you see the forms and and everybody just yeah. going crazy on there but and i feel like if you're like fighting to qualify to the semifinals this year so you're like 60 on a good day let's yeah. say or 50 uh, you can still go to some sick events yeah if they are like hold and then you can have like better prize money and win and like do. otherwise you always 50th yeah and then you never have the exposure and stuff that you could have on other races and then like the guys that was i think it, to me it makes sense it makes sense because the guy that will also like stay in the big teams like maybe three four riders the teams will be a little bit more like organized yeah you know like less mess and they're like if you have a team and you have like eight riders i think it's too much yeah I for the it. for the for the team. Whoa. Well, Dave. Dave saved it. Yeah, Dave. Good Dave. Um, I understand that. So for me, like, I know it sounds harsh and I'm in, in a good position because I'm in one of the best team. I'm having good results. Like, it's so easy for me to say that if I was maybe 40th, yeah. I would not have the same speech. Yeah. But I would also be happy to go race other pl- tracks because also those people are and me like all of the people pretty much complain about going to the same venues every year yeah then it will allow most of them to go not as far to new places new tracks new tracks and have like more exposure exposure experience like see there was AXS I think in Switzerland last weekend yeah and some of my friends went and they won the podium Really? And you see a podium of five guys, yeah. prize money, Stuff. like trophies, yeah. and they're like, they would never do this on the World Cup. And nah. it's so sick. They had some TV, like some videos, like here's my race friend from the IXS Cup in somewhere. Okay. Like it's super cool. That was, yeah. And then they come here and they struggle all week because they don't have the same money that could to us. Like, it's a bit unfair. Yeah. Not the same wheels and yeah. and uh, amount of piece Tires. parts and stuff. Yes. So they struggle. Yeah. Like it's not even fair. So I, they should not. There is that there is that like level. It's like the the top guys and the bottom guys, right? Yeah. Right? And it's it's. I don't mean to sound harsh, people listening at home, but it, it's the truth. There's 
There's the elite of the elite, which I'm talking with one right now, and then there's the ones that are fighting to get in, and Loic proves a good point. I mean, it would be cool one day to turn on Netflix and see you guys fight the top 30 fighting, but yeah. I, I think, um, yeah, I, I just... Uh, I yeah, think it gave me a lot to think about. Actually. Yeah, I think <laughs> we will uh, get there eventually, but for sure it's, it's going to create some controversy and uh, and no one's right. The sport, they have, yeah. the future of the sport is not there's not one solution. No, but they bought the rights for 10 years, yeah. so whatever they want to do and work with us to do it, we have to help them because it's in both interest. Yeah. And me, I'm a little bit old, I think, now. I'm 29. If I want to kind of see the, the fruits of that and the result of it and get more money from, like, outside sponsors and stuff, yeah. I think it will only come, like you said, Laurent told me, like, in the next four years. Right. Like, not next year, not in two years because it will take time for people to get yeah. hooked on it and then for, like, the viewership to go high and then for sponsors to be like, okay, I want to put it 500 in your team. Yeah. And then it will change the whole dynamic too because it's not going to be only specialized. It's going to be like specialized and I don't know, Toyota. Yeah. Or and then you have like Takis. bigger reach and then it's it's all like, it's all for the best, but for sure in the process, some guys will be gutted not to race World Cups. Yeah. But it's all good. It doesn't have to be this way. They can, like I said, there's so many other good races. Yeah. Final MT beers. I have the pleasure of speaking with Abigail Hoagie. Abby is a... Uh, been at the races for quite a while now i'd say how many years uh my first race was in 2017 like oh, wow. a like a national cup okay and world cup was 2019 my first one did you start in germany or did you start in usa i started in germany when i was 16 wow okay yeah. okay cool so what i want to know is how did this year stack up against other years go mm, you mean <laughs> results wise on my end we can do that first <laughs> Okay, so results-wise on my end, it was quite average. Um, I think I had a better World Cup season last year. Um, but at Nationals in the U.S. and uh, at, like, Crankworks and stuff, I think I had pretty good results, and I was really happy with that. Um, yeah, as for World Cups, it could have been better, but I also came off injury right into the season, yeah. so it was uh, all a bit uh, wild. How about that bike, that Contra? The bike is really sick. Uh, I was positively surprised at how well it handles okay. and uh, how fun it is to ride. Um, yeah, I really don't feel like I had to make any like uh, minus points on it. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, sounds like you had a pretty just solid season. You got through it. You're not you're not uh, in a cast. You're not in, in anything like that. Honestly, that was my goal. Yeah, yeah. coming out not injured. Yeah. Okay. But now I've, I've been tasked with asking people this. Uh, I need to know um, from, I guess, from a female rider's perspective, mm -hmm. how, this, um, how this new organization has catered to you this past season. Uh, I would, I'm not a fan. Um, I think they had some good points. I always like to start with good points, like yeah. the new track tape. Yep. I like the way that they, uh, they use those poles now instead of the tape because they're reusable. And uh, if you ride out of course, you don't get like tape wound up in your bike and everything. And it's, I feel like it's a little bit safer and uh, yeah, more uh, environmentally friendly. Yeah. And I really liked um, that at the, m <laughs> it's, a, it's a plus and a negative that in the middle of the season, they changed it to two practice sessions instead of one. Yeah. It was very spontaneous when they did it. And it was really hard to like, like work with on the first time it happened. But after that, I realized that I really enjoy having uh, two hours in the morning and then one and a half like after the men have ridden the track in too. Yeah. So it's really been helpful. Um, but honestly, like in, from a motivational perspective, we're like, a, or like I, I love being here and want to race. Uh, the semifinals have absolutely been like a huge uh, minus in that. I did not enjoy them. Uh, I didn't even like the idea of them. Right. It just changes your mindset so much. You're like, yo, if I do a great qualifying, it won't matter because I'd have to do it all again. And that's like the, I feel like that's like the heart of downhill is like when somebody puts down one really crazy run and then like you have this person who's in finals then out of like from last, before yeah. last year, like yeah. last year still. And then you have this person who's in finals who like came out of nowhere, you know, and yeah. now they're just like, they're taking that like the, like the extraordinaire and like the, the, the chance that downhill brings with it. Yeah. They're just, they're just eliminating that. And, uh, 
Downhill isn't like a very consistent sport because the weather's constantly changing, the track's constantly changing, you can have a mechanical, you can crash or whatever. It's so it's such a wild sport and that's why we love it. Right. But uh they just changed it and like it's just not like I don't need it's like finals aren't that interesting anymore because it's like it's been filed down so much. Yeah. It's like yeah. So yeah, I didn't enjoy semis. Um, I didn't like how they treated standard teams. It feels like a systematic uh, underprivileged being a, a standard team. Yeah. And um, I and we we told them that at that meeting. Yeah. And uh, how, how was that? Do you feel like you were heard, or do you? So so it started off by we had like certain speaking points and like one one rider, well one team manager represent like. Uh, represented the group and like uh went down through all those points and uh the person that we were talking to he just like he's just such an explain away kind of person and he's i felt like we were talking being talked down to like we were children Uh. and he was like explaining things as if we hadn't been around for like i've been in the world cup circuit now for four years Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of other riders are 15 years and he was explaining like that we don't know how it works and like we know and then he was like bringing out facts and numbers that just didn't add up and i was and like i kind of smirked at one point and then he's like oh why did you smirk and i'm like no no i'll talk about it later and he was like very like yeah. aggressive about that and i, I was like i was like i'm sorry like it's just it was so dumb what he uh, said i mean sorry i like no it's fine um, it's just, i i feel i feel bad that that had to happen you know oh like, yeah i thought it was gonna be a positive like meeting when they first brought it up but it sounds like it it was just kind of i feel i feel like at, at some point it there was some positives like okay. um so yeah he did all the explaining away and everything yeah but then i think there's some things that were just said where he just couldn't explain it away okay. and there was it, where he just had to listen and you could see that he didn't know what to say because he knew we were right. right and then he said like he kept contradicting himself and that's like what happens when people get like flustered and like they're trying to like they're trying to like um like ease the tension but then you say something wrong and then yeah. he he caught himself like in so much like uh. he got himself in so deep at like the end because i feel like he was getting tired and wasn't attentive enough yeah and um like yeah because i um i i spoke up towards the end of the whole meeting because i was kind of just there to listen and like support and like uh show up in numbers yep. um but then um uh, and then i was like yo i think because he's like yeah but this is the first year that you guys are having meetings and i'm like well this is the first year that we need meetings <laughs> because yeah. we've never felt this underprivileged and this like and this this type of unfairness that's yeah. been going on yeah. um yeah and then he brought a very good example of what's because he was like tell me what's unfair and i'm like this this and this he said like well this this and this and then he said something and i'm like exactly that is unfair and he's like well that's our choice and i'm like yeah all right let, so, yeah. let, let's what do you think next year is going to look like? I really, I'm really, fingers crossed that um, they don't uh, up the team fees even more because they've already doubled this year. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. What, oh, would the solu- what would be the solution? So I think we don't need semis. Okay. I think uh, I've talked to some people from the camera crew and they're completely overworked when it comes to semis. Oh, they, really? They have like 14 hour days and they don't get paid for the over the, oh, the, hour, the extra hours. That I don't know. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're completely like, it, it's such an extra workload if you have to film an entire like ra- added race. Yeah. And this year's even two added races because they have the juniors. Ah. I think it's fantastic that juniors are, get filmed. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, that's a positive because that's never happened before. Yeah. So that's something that they've brought into this wor- this year that, that is good. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that they have semis is kind of just unnecessary in my eyes. Um, I think it would be better without semis. Yeah, I'm hoping that the that they take the standard teams and they make it like a fair race again because uh, there was some races where it just felt unfair to be a standard team compared to an elite team because they had like information that we didn't have and they were able to compete at a different level and we were caught off guard constantly yeah so i'm hoping um they take what we said in the actual consideration or and try to make it um a fair game again um and just treat everybody equally and uh they say that they want to grow the sport. At the same time, he also said that um, that there's too many riders and too many teams. Yeah. So it's very contradictory to what they want. And um, do you think it'll be that top 30 and that's it, or do you think there's there's room on the table to get the the 60 in? I really hope they get the 60 in. Yeah. I hope they don't just do qualifying to 30 or women's qualifying to 10. That yeah, would be crazy. That's very. I mean, not cool. I but. mean, I feel like the men are already getting like it's already harder for them, but for the women, it's like it's it became so much harder 15 wasn't enough last year yeah 10 is definitely not enough this year oh man yeah 
So okay. it was a negative development in a lot of areas, but I hope they keep the positives and fix the negatives. That's a good way of looking at yeah. it. So, uh, Abby, what's your plan for next year? Um, so Anna and I want to continue our team. Um, we really like where what our team is doing, and we like what our um, partners are doing with us. Um, we still enjoy being at the races together and seeing everybody. Yeah. Even though it's been there's been a lot of frustration this year, but um, yeah, our plan is as of now to continue the way we've been this year. Um, we're still working on if we're going to change some sponsors or add some new ones or stuff like that. Yep. But uh, that's still in the works. It's I don't think it's going to be finalized until like November or something. So. I have the privilege of standing with the man, the myth, the legend, Jordi Cortez. Um, Jordi, you've been on the World Cup for quite some time now. And uh, we're just trying to get a perspective or overall thoughts on how this past season has gone. Um, let's start there. How do you, what's your uh, feeling? Oh, man, I don't like, know. Or even work-wise, like, wh- ha- has it affected workflow? Absolutely, it's it's definitely affected us. In what way? I mean, the first two-thirds of the season, there were twice as many riders as we're used to. Oh. And there were also kind of random scheduling changes that weren't communicated very well. Yeah. So, like, for us, we, we plan everything down to the hour of the day. And yeah. We have a couple of days that are full on. So if anything alters that, it puts us in a really bad position, especially if you don't know and halfway through the day, everybody's scrambling for product. Yeah. So that part of it's been rough. Um, I think this is probably one of the worst seasons for us so far. Okay. Just as far as organization and information and costs. Costs. So is it that they don't... You, it, is it almost like they don't say it until it's the last minute, or do you get the heads up? No, we don't get any kind of heads up. Okay, and that's kind of been the overall yeah. uh, theme I've been hearing. Is and same for us as media. But um, what do you? How do you see this going in the future? <laughs> that's a tough one. I don't. I don't see a whole lot of light at the end of the rainbow yet. Okay. I, I see a lot of promises, but right now. Right now, it just seems like an extra layer in between what used to be a headache with the UCI and the organizer. Yeah. And now we have another person to pass blame. Right, right. right? Like, I mean, I don't know if you saw where we were in Leger, which was like a oh, K dude. and a half out of town. Oh, my God. In a gravel, a, on a tilted gravel I, road. I couldn't find you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you ask the organizer and they're like, oh, well, it's Warner Brothers' fault because they didn't do this. Oh. You talk to Warner Brothers, they're like, that has nothing to do with us. It's this guy. Uh. And it's like, well, at the end of the day, we need a pit and we need power and we don't get either of those half the time. And, and exposure. I yeah. mean, if you're hiding how, I mean, not just the riders, but us as media and, and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Like we're in this one way or the other to market things whether it's through winning or through exposure exposure yeah and if you can't you don't have the tools to do your job well yeah it's it's a bummer or the information or the information yeah Yeah. okay so what's what's next year looking like for jordy um yeah that's a good question as well because it's we don't know right we have these fake schedules or screenshots of people's computers or this and that i've seen them floating around like i work for a pretty big company that budgets are done yeah right and if something else comes in that we have to spend money on we're in trouble and i know we're a huge company but that's not how it works so does that do they this is actually my personal question but like does that get dumped on you then like is it like Jordy what's going on here or is it do they understand they understand but the problem is that it doesn't change right. the it, bottom line the right effect. like I need to know what we're doing in order to get yeah. money to do it yeah so. and next year there's a lot more races with the same amount of racing like they've split XC from most downhill yeah. so now you got instead of one race yeah. you have two so you're on the road twice as long, but you really have the same amount of racing. Yeah. So there's going to be some stuff there that we don't know how to figure out. And then they're kind of lumping Enduro in. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like anybody really cares about what happens to it. No. And so, that, that Ludenville didn't get hardly any... I didn't know it was happening until we got there. And Ludenville was probably the best. Right. 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 And, right. and, the, and the cancellation and all that. Yeah. But it's... 
I don't want to like bum the view. <laughs> you know, I don't want to like bum the viewers out or the listeners out too much. Like, there's got to be uh, some kind of. I mean, I was talking to Bernard. Like, do we need like a rider summit? Do we need like? Have you guys been talking about stuff like that? Or? I think we all talk about it, but getting everybody together to make a, a real conscious change is seems to be almost impossible. And I'm including myself in the problem. Yeah. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. Right? It's like, what if we have 400 entrants in Andorra? In Andorra. Sounds- and Leo Gang. Like, the yeah. numbers were double. Yeah. And then it causes problems with everybody because lifts get jammed up all this stuff changes and people are fought that it's two separate mountains yeah. to begin with that that's an issue so it's like either don't let these people enter right but don't take their money and then treat them as second-rate citizens yeah yeah because until somebody actually takes a stand we're not going to have a backup series either Okay. Like, as long as you can keep entering World Cups, even if you get treated like shit, you're going to do it. Well, it's everyone's pay to play and yeah. no, no prize, you know, no uh, no payoff. I mean, it's, you know, the guys were saying, like, I'd rather do a, a U.S. Open and get 15 grand and, you know, stuff like that. But still, it's the World Cups and we want it to be what it, it was. Ah, it's tough, man. It is. It's, it's tough. It's a tough. And it's, I want, like I just said, I don't want the listeners to be bummed, but... There has to. Have you heard of any any sort of positive like reinforcement about next year, or like something that we can hang our hats on here? <laughs> well, I think at the end of the day, the racing is still phenomenal. Yeah. Like this year's racing has been so good. Yeah. XC and downhill. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, we still have that. Right. Um, I don't know about changes for next year. Like, there's a few people that seem really positive and are listening to feedback. Yeah. But the question is, can they do anything? Okay. Right? I mean, we're talking about a massive company. I mean, I think what they say, 80% of everything you watch is owned by... That's that's unbelievable, That's insane. And we're a tiny little no-money organization. We're like less than 1%. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think... I guess we're just going to keep hammering on. That we are. Okay. All right. You heard it here, folks. We're just going to keep hammering on. Jordy, thank you so much. Thanks, Jackie. (laughs) Vital MT Beers. I'm here with Colin Escobel, who uh, is the head man over here at TRP Tents at uh, any World Cup. And uh, Colin, you're from the U.S. Um, Yep. uh, You've uh, been at every race. Uh, What has been your experience this past season as compared to other seasons? Um, you know, it's kind of stuttered along a little bit. The, uh, the flow in the pits has been kind of a mystery. Mm-hmm. Um, the setup has changed a lot. Um, we're running into a lot of questions when we arrive at races this year. Um, you know, with any change, there's going to be some growing pains, but you know, it's, it's not, there hasn't been clear solutions and a lot of the answers have been a mystery and almost felt hidden a little bit like we weren't like i was offending people for asking like what are we supposed to be doing here or what's the solution um and it's it's honestly felt like like some information has been like a state secret yeah um deep state which has been odd you know we're just trying to keep the show going and race bikes and have fun and do what we've been doing for years but it's it's really it's felt like three left turns to make a right right a lot of times this year for lack of getting into it deeper yeah and offending but yeah god roger that um next year <laughs> how does that look yeah. can you even can you start to you know, think about next year well, i've started to and then just you know we're trying to finish everybody's excited to go home yeah and finish up you know a difficult year but next year it's it looks even harder because there's a race every weekend next year between you know here at least you know we can split our resources between downhill and cross country yeah. on the same weekend with the same crew, but now it bleeds over to like every weekend. And, really? You know, that's a lot of time away. Um, yeah. It's almost like we're to do it. We're going to have to hire another person on another car. And you know, as everybody knows, racing budgets are getting trimmed, Bad. and the events and the cost are going the opposite direction. So. 
we're trying to wrap our head around that and where we want to put our resources and how we're going to do it, quite honestly. Okay. Um, that, and it keeps changing, keeps changing, keeps changing, keeps changing. So it, it's it's hard to invest in the future when you don't know what the future is. What would be your best your best solution? Like riders yeah. and them getting to, you guys all getting together or like how to? Well, y- you know, I, <laughs> union's the bad word, you know. But, uh, it is, but it's also... But at the same time, th- those are formed for reasons, right? Yeah. Um, there's, you know, as a, as a neutral... Not neutral support, but, you know, we're here for the riders. You know, sometimes we get information last. Yeah. I have teams sending me information. Oh, did you hear this was changing? I'm like, no. Right. Um, yeah. And then people that gave me that information have gotten in trouble for giving me that information. Yeah. So, again, you know, there's always growing pains, but... Some of these problems are problems that don't need to be going on. Roger that. Um, <sighs> Light at the end of the tunnel? Well, you know what gets me through the day is a solution always presents itself, right? Right. But it's getting harder and harder. Again, I'll admit I'm tired and worn out. I'm eager to get home. Same. See my family same. and stuff like that and reset. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're getting together with, you know, headquarters and we're doing budgets and... You know, somebody was, you know, at work. He's like, hey, you're spending a lot of money. I'm like, I'm not doing anything different. Costs are just going up. Yeah. Period. Across the board. Oh, man. And then, like I touched on before, it's the schedule's getting even bigger. Yeah. And we're trying to trim, so we're figuring it out. But, you know, something's got to give. And with that, you know, see what's giving is teams, you know. Um Fortunately. And then team communication. You know, some teams are getting different information than other teams, which isn't cool. Um, there's preferential treatment. Yeah. That's obvious. Very obvious. I don't want to point fingers, but it's obvious that some people are getting more information than others. Yeah. Well, even that, like li- that, like you said about the list about next year. Like, who knows if that's even what what's going to be the, li- the 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 race list? You know? Yeah. People say, "Well, did you see the schedule?" I'm like, "Yeah, whatever." Yeah. Because this is going to be a new one next week. <laughs> I mean, that's just reality. I don't want to be overly cynical, but it just yeah. you know we've we've shown up at races where what's going on today? Oh, that changed. Yeah. Oh, that changed. I mean, today so, with the, uh, the rumor this morning was race canceled or semis done away with, and then which is, I don't get that because we've raced in much worse, worse. way worse yeah. before, and if stuff got to the point that it, we needed to pull full stop, then we pull full stop. Yeah, and everybody's been cool with that before. Yeah, and so decisions are being made without asking the riders. You know, car racing has drivers groups they get together and decide if it's safe or not yeah and they decide it they're the ones out there putting it on the line so um and that's kind of what it was with uh in the past right yeah it would be like i think greg was the head of it and yeah and they he'd make the call so now things are just coming like oh we're not racing why everybody's ready to go yeah um and and with that being said you know a lot of people spend a lot of money to be here (laughs) to all of a sudden show up and stuff stopping without even asking if we want to do it is uh, and then again, I know there's a flow that needs to happen with that, but yeah, <sighs> I'm really trying to be diplomatic here. No, <laughs> I, I, it's it's a tough situation, but I knew you would yeah say things that other people might not be yeah. I tend to keen to say go off sometimes. Ah, that's why <laughs> Colin will say it. <laughs> but at the same, no, I mean it just <sighs> it's been frustrating to see what's happened this year. Bottom line, Robin. Um, yeah. And I don't think I'm alone in saying that. Roger. Okay. Um, um, or are you going to stick it out? I'll stick it out. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, what, what year are we in? We've been doing this for 30 years, man. Oh, man. We've seen the ups and downs, you know. That's why I'm, I'm sure a solution will present itself. But yeah. there's just a way of doing things. There's a such thing as manners. There's such thing as respect for everybody's job and what they're doing yes. and what they're putting into it. Good. Um, and I will leave it at that. Thank you, Colin. Vital MT Beers, I'm here with our, well, with none other than Aaron Gwynn. Aaron, um, I just wanted your thoughts. I know you've kind of popped in and out uh, this season and had some things going on on the side, but uh, you, you, with that, you've probably had a unique perspective on how things have been going. So I want to know how you think this season went. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I think a little bit of mixed uh, observations and, and feelings for myself. Um, I think overall as a fan, which I've been more of this year right. than a, an actual rider. <laughs> um, I mean, the racing has been great for sure. There's been, what, seven racers and seven winners and seven World Cups and yeah. a different world champ winner. So nobody's actually won two races this year. That's crazy. So that's been pretty wild and, and cool. Um, the format, you know, I think it, it is a compromise. I think even from the promoters and stuff, we kind of, I think they knew that coming in. It maybe wasn't going to be the ideal thing. And it's hard for me because that's a bit outside of my wheelhouse. You know, I could say personally, like, I don't really like the semi format. Yeah. Um, I can't speak from experience as a racer. I don't, I can imagine it and I don't think I would have preferred it. Yeah. And I know a lot of riders don't prefer it, but maybe I think some probably do. Yeah. Um, I'm still searching, but yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll... From a spectator standpoint, it's a bit weird to me. Like, I really like there being a lot of hype for that race run like saturday's race day or sunday depending on what day we race there's right. not like a race and then another race like i, I really like that build up for finals um i liked when there were 60 guys in the finals with 20 guys protected i think it gave a better shot of all the top guys being into finals with a chance to win which yeah. for me as a fan of any sport that's what i want to see it always sucks when you see a top guy go out yeah in qualifying um and our sport's just so easy to do that you know with flats and some of these like little mishaps you know if you're not protected like dakota for example i think he could have legitimately won val de sol this year and he didn't actually even qualify for finals because right. a couple little mishaps um i think it's a bit confusing as well like yeah i think we did find the best overall compromise of points and who's protected and who's not to try to limit the negatives um but it just is, it's hard, you know, you're trying to do too many different, like, opposing things at once. You just kind of can't, can't do everything great. So, you know, if you really need to get 30 guys into finals and 10 women to kind of satisfy that, whatever that is, two-hour TV slot, and you just have no more time and you want to film full runs as much as you possibly can, then I get those parameters are really hard to work around. Um personally i feel like the old like what we did last year was was good like you have whatever it is i think it's 10 or 15 women and then 60 men yeah and my idea was maybe you just run your 10 top women or 15 women and you just televise the top 10 and then you just delay that start on tv which is an ideal i know um but if you were to delay the women you know the the broadcast by 30 minutes or an hour so that women are just slightly delayed and then when the 60th man drops in, that's when you start your women's show. So you don't televise full runs for that 30, you know, 31 to 60 male. Yeah. Um, and you just, you know, you they still could film it. And then whoever the leader is, by the time you get to the 30th guy, you say, here's our current leader. Here's his run. Now let's dive into the top 30. You know what I mean? So you go from the top 10 women straight into the 30 men. That way, I think it kind of gives you the best of, you know, all the worlds. But I, I'm sure there's, you know, things I'm missing in there that probably make it not that easy so i don't know man a, a little bit mixed you know i mean i try to be pretty positive and give give everybody the benefit of the doubt i think everybody wants us to be successful and and go forward and there's obviously going to be a learning process there for everybody so um that's just part of the deal but yeah i think there's some areas that have been pretty good and i think there's some areas that definitely could have been handled better this year so um i think the real telltale will be what adjustments are they able to make this off season? What does the next year look okay. like? You know, do they take the feedback? Are they able to adjust and improve? Or are they going to keep doing it the same? Like, you know, in a lot of areas, whether it's safety or, you know, a lot of the other, some of the little issues we've had on and off this year. So I think for me, I just, I think it's fair to give everybody a shot and kind of see where they're at. And, um, yeah, so we'll see, you know, what next year looks like, but hopefully it's good. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You, you just knocked it out of the park, but now I'm interested, you personally, uh, can you talk about any of the stuff going on next year or next season or? Yeah, a lot of, uh, lots going on. We'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't talk about much yet. Okay. Uh, a lot of things aren't actually finalized. Uh, just kind of, yeah, we've got a, we've got a lot of really cool things happening kind of in and outside of racing directly yeah. that we'll be announcing here in the next month or two. Um, and then as far as the racing and the team and sponsors, like, yeah, that's all we're, we're working through everything right now. So awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your honesty. 
Uh, Aaron, all the best to you, brother. Yeah, thank you, bro. Um, when I've been tasked with asking you about this last or last year and this year, the comparisons and the future, but let's start with how did uh, overall this year? What was the feeling? Just just tell me your experience. Um, well, I've had to watch half of the races because I was injured. So yeah. Um, yeah, it definitely wasn't an improvement because we had semi-finals. We had to watch an extra run. The commentary wasn't an improvement. Um, it hasn't been what they sold it as, I think. It was, I, I don't know, but it was kind of sold as being better and bigger. Yeah. And it hasn't been. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, we, that's what I can gather so far. So, going forward, what... Like, you know, I, hey, do we, know we were just talking with Bernard and maybe, like, have more meetings and stuff like that. But, like, what – is there something, like, one one aspect of this that they can change to make it better? I think working together more with the, with the riders. Yeah. To try to improve from the riders' perspective would, would be good. Like is the vision for you to to just keep keep pushing on and and take it as it comes and 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 participate next year? Or are you uh, looking to go other direction? I want to do some more stuff in the US and probably see what else is going on from other series. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think you you still need to be at the World Cup, but hopefully the World Cup can grow and continue to improve. Right. Yeah. Which I feel like there's definitely quite a bit of room for yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And any, I guess if you had to, if you had one of the uh, officials right in front of us right now and they said, when, um, what's one aspect of, of either the televised side, the, the racing side that we can change right now at this race to make it better, what would it be? Cut the semifinals and change the commentary team. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm with Evan Warner at SRAM, kind of the head mechanic over on this side of the pond, right? Yeah, and uh, kind of just always the always the smiling face in the pits and uh, always ready to help. And um, how long have you been doing this, Evan? I think I started with SRAM in 2008, 2009, um, so a couple of years now. But, yeah, it's been, a, it's been an amazing ride, and, yeah, I've been – coming to the same place for years and years now it seems but pretty stoked yeah so with that being said you've you've gone through you know um some changes it's some ups and downs with the series how did this year compare to the the previous years yeah no absolutely i think this year we all knew it was going to be a bit of a learning year you know a lot of changes kind of all at once um we were ready for it expecting it i think one of my biggest takeaways this year is we were going back to a lot of the same venues it wasn't like we swapped out to like new venues that we'd never been to and stuff so a lot of us felt like man we know most of these we kind of know the drill we know where to fly into we know rental cars we know where to stay we know the track mostly yeah um so we were you know optimistic about that that like at least not a ton changed but i think going through this year definitely did realize the growing pains and the just learning curve is really steep for a new organization or new formats and stuff um yeah i think the the couple takeaways from that first block of racing in june um back to back to back was like wow the format changes are challenging or different and we adapted pretty well to those the juniors practicing on track walk day wednesday yeah um semifinals finals you know still have cross country we got edr in there as well but yeah definitely realized that like it it was pretty much what we expected it was going to be a challenge and it, yeah. it was for everybody different different people but we're getting through it i mean we got through it and i think hopefully just take away for going into like after mount st Anne, the last race of this season is yeah we got a lot to uh to kind of fine tune and hopefully we can all work together as a collective group do you, do you think that can happen do you th- as there have you heard of like a, a meeting or any type of like talks like with because i know i've just talking with everyone it seems that the the main problem is communication just us not knowing like not getting the schedule stuff like that do we just keep 
do you, do we all pick a day and everyone meets up and, and talks about it, or what do you, what do you think? Can I you... think you're spot on. I think communication is key. I mean, even within organizations or between teams and us, and you know, if if there's not a really good line of communication, there's it's really hard to work solutions out. I mean, yeah. you got to be talking and talking collectively as a group. So, I I agree. I think like going in, it should be a huge priority to take away, kind of do a. It's a horrible word. I think they call it like post-mortem kind of thing or post-op kind no, of no, thing I, of the yeah. season and a yeah. recap and see, you know, because it, it would be important too to focus, not focus, but identify like what went well, right. you know, what what can we do better? What what are some of the takeaways? I mean, I uh, I think learning a bit this year, thinking it, thinking it through, some of, some of the European rounds, there's just, there's a lot of riders, which is so great and awesome on the downhill side. But when you do consider that there's like 400 riders trying to qualify and race, yeah. and I think uh, when we were as it was the last three week block, but um, somebody pointed out that like 400 riders, if they do six runs of practice, 400 times six is 2,400 runs down a track. Like that might be something yeah. we kind of identify and work out. And I know there's a lot of talk of feeder programs and all that, or feeder series. Series, yep. It's it's a lot, man. There's so much going on. I think the communication thing that you mentioned is the absolute pivotal key point i mean there's nothing more important than talking it through with everybody and getting all the different points of view yeah you know absolutely so um so i don't want to take up any more of your time no, no. but um how do you what's what's the plan moving forward i think for us the biggest thing is you know we we've already been starting to book places for 2024 just so we oh, know yeah. yeah so i mean we're going off of like just kind of rumors and stuff so i think the biggest thing is let's try to get some talks about 2024 as soon as we possibly can yeah. once we get locations and dates kind of down then it's time to talk about the next step the de- details of those events the local organizations yeah. the actual format the number of riders how yeah. we're going to go if they're going to do the the semis, semis the, yeah i that. think yeah. dates and and locations would be awesome just so we have a clear understanding you know no more Rumors or, or, or yeah. sort of like screenshots floating around right, that right. we all we all think is the right thing, and then another screenshot comes in, oh, yeah. and we all get uh, confused. But yeah, and it's tough because I think after this you know whole season, everybody's you know wanting to move on, kind of not move on, but like take a break, well deserved oh, yeah, break. Yeah, yeah, but I think the key is almost set dates of like man, the end of October, we got to have a lot finalized for next year, and yeah. then work on the details of the little nitty gritty. Yeah. Not nitty gritty, but the the smaller. It's that those that the smaller stuff, folks. That that Evan's speaking about, like, is the the just the day to day scheduling, yeah. and that means everything. That's how you know how you're gonna get your rider to the course, how you know when to eat, even or exactly. you know, stuff like that. You're but spot on. I mean, I think yeah. like looking back, like we. We got through this year with some definite struggles and stuff, but um, we did get through it. It was a great year. I think there's a lot of good things to take away, coverage yeah. and stuff, and there's, there's totally. awesome things to come. It's still bike racing. It's still awesome. We're yeah. still lucky to all do it, and we're happy. Um, but, yeah, moving forward, we need we need deadlines a bit. I, th- I feel like dates. Uh, dates. dates. Like I, yeah. I work better if I know, like, hey, by Friday you have to do this. You're like, okay, well, I can't. I got to do it. Yeah. That totally. helps a lot for uh, for everybody's peace of mind and, and yeah. to accomplish things in a timely fashion for everybody totally well if you guys were struggling you didn't appear to be at all you're <laughs> the, the professionals of the professionals as is you know a few others so um thank you for being you thanks and you, uh Jack. thanks for all you do for us out here at these races man. thanks jackie you guys right. rock see you see ya here with none other than eddie masters and uh eddie you've had a a unique experience uh this year hmm. being on sort of the other side of the tape yep um you know we've had without red bull we've we've moved into hey, warner Lord. brothers and stuff what has been your your overall thoughts or or how do you feel that the the season has gone from last year to this year um i think um how would you put it for one, the racing is better than ever. Okay. You know, like we've had seven winners and seven races. Um, personally, uh, I'm not a fan, and I don't think many fan, uh, riders are fans of the semi final. I think it ruins the like natural crescendo of like yeah. um, one final run going from 60th 
down to first. Right. So, um, but I think that's just growing pains, you know. Like you've got to try different stuff. So, like you, you know, benefit of the doubt, you've got to give the, you know, it's we tried that for the first year, but yeah. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if that was canned next year and we went back to the original format because I think that's what downhill racing is about is uh, laying it all on the white line for one run right. rather than having a bit more of a strategy. Yeah. Um, do you, and Do you think, sorry to cut you off, but do you think that's been like an overall, like everyone's kind of been saying like the semis are what's got to go maybe for next year to kind of... I think so. Like, I haven't really spoken to, like, many of the top guys about that, but just gauging on what, well, you know, you read the... Done it before, yeah, like, right? read the room. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think people aren't that stoked about it. Um, yes. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. So, um, I'm sure if you go and chat to a few people, yeah. that might be a topic that comes up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then because of that... I think the live broadcast is, like, oversaturated. It's too much downhill. Yeah. Um, And I think you're losing that. You you know, people might tune in for the semis and not tune in for the final or vice versa. Right, Um, right. So, yeah. But I I think that, um, from a rider's point of view, that if you qualify in the top 30 then you've like earned the right to be on the live feed so like the broadcast doesn't need to go to top 60 yeah it's cool to keep it at the 30 you know hey even if it went less it's like you're yeah. rewarded for throwing down a good quality run right um yeah. kind of like a you know to like go yeah. fast get tv time like yeah. that's how it goes so whether or not they uh tighten up the broadcast to a, like a smaller number but yeah you know 25 30 it's even if it went to 20, yeah. it's like, um, yeah, you're racing for that primetime TV. Okay, so it sounds like positive thoughts for next year as to maybe honing in some of this stuff. Yeah, and um, the the broadcast itself, I think, has been real good. There's been heaps of cameras and stuff. It's oh, yeah. like you're fine-tuning the commentary and all that but like you've got to give those guys cut them some slack as well like they're learning yeah um yeah totally you've got to remember as well like when red bull took over there was a lot of negativity as well and then they got it to a point where it was a sick product so yeah um maybe we're just maybe through that now yeah yeah Yeah, i reckon um and it's sick bringing in other riders yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, Gwen's been doing a sick job. I was surprised we didn't see Reese Wilson get in the booth because he also is like really good at it. Yeah. Um, but stuff like that, just bringing in someone else to bounce and freshen up. And the, all the um, people that know it, you hmm. know, and, and have that experience and stuff. And knowing all the riders. So, yeah. That's... All in all, it's, it's not all bad. It's, uh, yeah, I think the sport is in a really good place just off the back of how exciting the racing is. Yeah. Vital Empty Beers, this interview is going to be a little bit different. Um, Right now I'm speaking with George Gomes, and uh, the last two years I've been globetrotting basically with George and um, watching what his his vision has uh, basically come to fruition, and um, he's now managing the Transition Factory team. Uh, Before that, uh, George had pro builds, and still does, but um, yeah, now now things have changed, buddy. So I want to know how the season went for you. What, what do you think? Uh, started off pretty shaky and rough. Um, nine people that have never hung out with each other, or traveled together, or lived together, all getting together for the first time is a little tricky sometimes. Um, but um, but a little bit of. Uh, you know, care and nurturing and uh, patience. We are uh, where we are today, which is uh, leading, leading the series with a number one plate, which we're super proud of. And uh, um, unfortunately, our one of our riders went down yesterday, but making our way progressively into the top five, and uh, we're super proud of that. Also, um, 
and uh, our boy Tristan Lemire finally finding some speed after a huge, um, huge, crash. huge crash that probably would have ended most people's careers. Yeah, I thought I was walking up to a dead body, but he somehow survived. Keep going, sorry. Yeah, so um, yeah, here we are at uh, Mount St. Anne, double sized the pits from last year. Had the the LOC recognize my truck, the Pro Builds racing truck from last year, and was like, dude, you are not on our uh, itinerary. Uh, I don't have you on my list. And I said, that's because you're looking at the wrong team, buddy. Yeah. Looking for Transition Factory Racing. And even the dude's big old smile, I had to give him my hat because he wanted a, a little bit of a memorabilia from somebody that he remembered from a year ago. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, aside from that, I mean, you know, we we had an idea of what uh, the season before downhill, the way the schedule structure worked and the way it was televised, a climactic ending. Um, this year they added semis, which I'm going around and talking to everybody, and it seems the general consensus is get rid of semis and we'll be fine. What do you th- what do you think? I mean, it, it, is it that? Is it the? Is it? Do you think it's just a growing pain that we're going through and, and everything will be cool? Or what's your what's your feeling on how they've done as an organization? Um, honestly, I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. This year seems like they're trying to get a lot of things uh, worked out and trying to figure out how this is going to work best. Um, unfortunately, some of the stuff that they have done over the year has, uh, has impacted... Uh, some of the smaller teams my team uh, including um but you know we're all hoping that this is going in the right direction uh we all love the sport i don't think there's anybody in the organization or in the uci or eso that wants to destroy our sport um but i think like we're all going through a little bit of growing pains just like my program is going through some growing pains and going through some changes um I mean, I don't know. Last year was definitely hard. This year, I feel like more staff and more people, and it seems like it was even harder. Right. Uh, not sure if that's just, like, being a new team or if that's just, like, uh, ever, ever-changing ever changes from week to week, from race to race. Uh, but, yeah, um, like I said, I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, trying to look at it from a more positive aspect and – not trying to dwell on too many of the rumors or too much of what's going on and trying to just focus on my job, focus on my team's job and focus on uh, keeping this overall title and taking that vest home. Cool. And so I guess um, for next year, do you, is it even on the radar yet or are, we just, or are you just trying to get through this race? What's, what's going on with that? Uh, with all the... Every, everything's like kind of like we don't really know as a team. I don't really know what's going to happen next year. I don't know what the fees are going to be. I don't even know what the schedule is going to be. So kind of makes it hard for you to start preparing for next year. So basically the most important thing I could do is just focus on the task at hand, which is, like I said, um, capturing this overall. Valentina. Um, and Valentina making, you know, doing what she set out to do this year, which is taking on the overall uh, – series points and being overall champion yeah well it's it's looking like it's headed that way and uh george um it's been i can hope we can keep doing this dude um so uh thank you for your time your honesty and uh yeah i'll uh i'll see you in the driver's seat yeah dude if anyone knows what this what, what it took to get here and who's been with me by my side the whole entire time it's you, dog, so you know exactly how much this all means and you know how much pressure is on all of us right now to, you know, complete what we set out. We said in the beginning of the season that we were going to come home with the leader's jersey and it's looking like that's might happen. So I don't want to jinx it, but, yeah, yeah, we're doing everything we possibly can to get there. Roger that. Thank you, George. Thank you, Jack. Vital MT Beers, I have the pleasure of speaking with Miss Nina Hoffman. Nina, you've been on the circuit for how many years now? Uh, I'd say to 18 was her first World Cups and then 19 the first full season. So. First full season, yeah. 2019. 19, yeah. So how you so you've been around so uh, you know the, the circuit long enough. How do you compare this year as to previous years? Um, I think this year have been quite a solid year still some ups and downs um so i want to get a bit more consistent 
Uh, I, I'm definitely improved in terms of putting just good runs down back and back and crashing less and uh, yeah, sure. all that stuff. Um, compared to last year, it's it's an improvement in terms of how I'm riding and stuff. Um, also in terms of position a little bit, um, yeah. but uh, could could still be a bit better. <laughs> the season didn't start too well, so that was a bit of an issue. But I also fought a few injuries, just little injuries. Um, which I still carry through the season, so that made it not easier, and um, yeah. So you were just at the U.S. Open. How did you, did you, what was like your, comparing that to the World Cup? I mean, I know nothing beats the World Cup, but <laughs> how did you, what was your experience there? Yeah, it's always good to have a little bit of a smaller race and a different setup and the different schedule and stuff to just like, you know, to experience something different. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it's not too like not as stressful um, as, a, as a World Cup race. Still, when it comes race day, you you want to be on it and yeah. um, you're in the same same mind space and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But it's always cool to have such races. And there were a lot of fans, and it's cool to meet with them and uh, yeah, do some love with Steve because yeah. he was able to ride that and was, stuff. So that that's was, cool. That was cool seeing him yeah. and you on. Or... And he is a, he has a perfect speed for me, so he's oh, really? he's still faster than me, but not crazy much faster. So I can I can keep up. <laughs> not, not like the boys, you know, I, they are gone after a few turns. <laughs> I would have thought you would have been beating the crap out of him. No, 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 no. He's still okay. holding. All right, Steve, you heard it. Steve still got it, folks. <laughs> um, and um, a little bit more towards what I was tasked to do. Um, how do you feel that the new um, Red Bull going out of Time Warner coming in, how do you feel that that's gone? throughout the season um they done some good changes they done some stuff that still needs work okay so i'm a bit mixed feelings about that um i mean they have they've speaking big words and i feel like it's only half of them came came to to work uh, yeah to true whatever mm-hmm. so i hope for some more improvement for next year we gave some feedback already and we are talking about things but um yeah yeah okay roger that well Uh, Thank you for speaking with me and thank you for being honest and good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nina. (laughs) Vital MT Beers, I have the pleasure of speaking with Sean Ahern. Uh, Sean's from Australia um, and she, this is your, you said your first year? Yeah, my first year, um, well my first actual full season of World Cups, which is cool, and also my first year on a factory team, so. Awesome. And what was your, what was your experience overall? Um, overall, it's been a roller coaster of a year, I'd say. Um, definitely tricky with the added semis and things like that into it, and then also just trying to find my groove racing again after so long away, and also just finding kind of my place within the team and just getting used to having, um, I guess, everyone helping me out so much. So oh, yeah. that was definitely something to get used to. Cool. Um, but overall, it's been a really cool experience, and like I am so thankful. Like I've learned so much this year, and I've had such a great team behind me to help make it happen. And yeah, like I'm, yeah, I'm really excited for next year and just like kind of taking the experiences from this year onto next year is pretty cool. So Yeah, that would have been my next question. So with YT next year, we can expect to see you back? Yes. Yeah, I got another two year contract with YT. So awesome. pretty stoked on that. And um, I guess it gives me the confidence to build momentum moving forward. And yeah, it's a tricky if you just get a one year contract because you're fighting for another ride. And if you don't get another ride, you take time away again. And it's just hard to build momentum when you're never like consistently there. So yeah. I guess every race I've pretty much made it into semis. So I'm pretty stoked on that and like consistency for me is there yeah um just need some bit of building and yeah a little bit of kind of taking away what i learned this year into next year and working hard in the off season on all my weaknesses and i'm very excited good that all that that's awesome all that being said (laughs) though you're the first australian i've talked to with the new like setup and format do you think we'll see less aussies coming in or um, i think unfortunately as much as this that sucks to say i think there'll be way less aussies okay. moving forward especially privateers like yeah the way the sport's going unless you're really on a team it's really hard financially and also just for us we're so far away and you're away from home all year like i was yeah. away for seven months this year so oh when i get home it's seven months uh, oh in a few God. days so i'm pretty excited God. um but i think for yeah privateers doing it it's really hard and like i've realized this now coming from being a privateer myself with the old setup that was hard enough and now with the new kind of format it's really hard and it's just so expensive and i knew that costs had gone up and stuff so 
of course it's going to be trickier and us as Aussies we just don't have the same opportunity down there as we do in Europe so right. I'm like really thankful I know my brother is as well like we're both on a team and that's really special but not every Aussie gets that um, opportunity I guess and that's really hard so yeah well on a more positive note Sean has been killing it this year <laughs> and you will see her next year Sean I can't tell you how much I appreciate this thank you very <laughs> thank much thank you so much cheers legend cheers <laughs> Folks, I'm here with none other than Danny Hart. Um, Danny, just wanted to get your feedback and maybe opinions on how this last season's gone in comparison to others. Um, you've been around for a while, so I definitely value your opinion. What do you got? Yeah, so for me, the new schedule it hasn't been ideal. Last week saw me out of the final because of a crash in the semi-final, which sucks for me and I'd like to say it sucks for everybody else as well because I can put on a good show sometimes so that was a shame yeah um, a lot of the time like after qualifying if you qualify really well you're like wow that was awesome like looking forward to tomorrow right but and then when you actually think again you're like oh, I've got to do it again and again so like the, it's a bit like of an antique sort of climax sort of thing so right. I much prefer qualifying in a final yeah. Um, the season hasn't gone according to plan for me. It was a slow start, and then Ludenville, I was going really well and on for a top five, top three, yeah. and just put it down in one of the what you would think of an easier turn at the bottom. And then Andorra, I got rained on yeah. after qualifying well, and they took the semi away there. Yeah. So it was straight into a final and got rained on then. Legier just had a bad race and then last week qualified well and crashed in the semi-final and that was all she wrote so um, just looking to have a good weekend this weekend but I definitely would rather just have qualifying in a final and it seems... I don't think I'm on my own in saying that neither so, no. and also like everybody has so long to to get up to speed so then everybody's on the same look same lines and there everybody has guys up on the track yeah and everybody's timing so then it sort of takes that away of, like learning it quicker and getting it done you know so yeah. um yeah i much prefer the old schedule yeah or the old race schedule like the practice schedule has been quite good with splitting it up yeah gives you a chance to sit and have some lunch as opposed to try and fit lunch in between riding and that's good but yeah. um Everything else, I think I sort of prefer the old way. Yeah, and like I've seen you, I mean, maybe one positive is like I see you guys go up when the juniors go and, and kind of check out lines and yeah, get yeah. a better idea. Yeah, but even that, like I did that at the first one, I think, or the first couple. Yeah. And I stopped doing that because, no offense, offense to the juniors, there's only five or six guys that we really want to watch and then obviously yeah, they... the, the circulation is not ideal and then you see people doing all sorts of funky stuff so yeah. I stopped doing that but um, it could be a beneficial a ben it could be beneficial but not for me right um, so uh, we're not really hearing much about next year but as it stands now what what what's Danny Hart's next year look like oh uh, he doesn't know himself yet. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a hard time at the moment. World Cup finals, and I don't have anything lined up for next season just yet. Um, nothing's... Well, you're not so alone I, in it. No, and, I know. And that's, I, that's kind of the issue, I think. I haven't signed on any dotted lines just yet. Right. All right. Well, um, I val again, value your opinion, and, and thank you for your time. If, no. you, could, if you could give one take away or add one thing to either to improve your uh just overall uh you yeah know, being at the race what would it be well i would take the semi-final away okay i'm sure yeah i've heard that quite a bit yeah. so all good man well i appreciate your time again and, and uh good luck this weekend perfect thank you thank you danny Vital Empty Beers, I'm here with Michaela Parton. She is from Scotland. Yes. And uh, she's been on the circuit now for how long? Uh, so my first uh, World Cup was in 2019, so I haven't been doing it that long. And then obviously we had the COVID year, so yeah, not actually that much racing at the moment, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. 
how's um, this year been compared to last year as far as organizationally and all that? Like, has it, and, and as a female, has it has it changed or yeah, anything like that? It's, um, well, speaking personally, I, I, it's been pretty tough uh, season for me, to be fair. It's um, mm-hmm. just a lot of, like, curveballs this season, a lot of maybe, like, a little bit of bad luck here and there. But um, overall, like, I'm really stoked. Uh, on just being here and uh, it, it's definitely hard like the semis and finals yeah. um, haven't made finals this season yet but I'm glad that I've made semis a couple of times yeah. and uh, yeah I think there's a lot of people in the same boat uh, it's just different I guess okay so for next year we're gonna see Michaela coming back or yeah I hope so as long as I uh, get the support to be here like I, I definitely can't afford to fund it myself but as long as I continue to be supported uh, I really hope so like I think this last race has given me a lot of confidence and I've shown what I can do and yeah. I just need more time <laughs> she just sent it by the way but, <laughs> yeah. uh, folks I'm with none other than our our very own USDH uh, Chris Grice Chris, um, it's been a it's been a bit of a season for you, huh? I mean, I love ups and downs and um, all that. Can you take me through some of it? Yeah, so f- yeah, for sure. Like a lot of ups and downs. Um, I ended up missing the first race due to like an injury, which was not ideal. Yeah. And then came into the second one with one day in the downhill bike and qualified, and then I missed out on finals. I made semis. Oh. So that was like not not bad considering. Um, and then since then, it's been a been a bit up and down, like. This year, I feel really good on the bike, better than ever. The bike feels amazing. I feel good. And then, like, I've showed sweet speed, like, in yeah. splits or time training. But, obviously, it's hard to do it all right when it really counts. Right. So then, like, a final run or a quality run, like, ah, something will happen. And, like, for example, in a quality run now, the level of the sport is so insane. Like, one mistake and you're, see you later. Yeah, you're gone. So, yeah, it's, it really makes you that you have to be on your game, which is good. Like, it's great for the sport. And then last week in Snowshoe was my best elite. Uh, weekend yet I yeah, qualified 17th semi-final 13th which was awesome yeah and then in the final I was wanted to, wanted to give it everything I had and then I slid out yeah. so I ended up 27th you and Luca same, same yeah oh man it I took out two Americans I was like <laughs> come on man but uh overall yeah, I was still happy with the weekend still my best elite result and like top 30 right now is with the level is is quite is quite uh good yeah so yeah just want to keep that going and do it again so that yeah that was that was my next question next year i mean we're just pushing forward and and taking things as they come or are you gonna try to do things a little bit differently or what can you speak on that or yeah for sure like i think there's there's always things to work on and for me i know i need to work on my racecraft a little bit like when you're on the clock it's different than a time training run so right to do it when it counts is something that's really important and a bit mental and then also physically there's a couple of things that i need to work on Okay. Like for these longer tracks, for example, it's it's really physical, and that's something I can improve on. What so could, for sh- what could you like? Uh, is it an arm pump issue or uh, like a leg thing? For me, arm pump is probably the hardest thing. So like for, on the longer tracks, Fort William, Mont Saint Anne. But that's from your injuries. No, oh, like really? no, like yeah, I've, I've injured one arm, but the other one's fine, and then yeah, it's yeah. A, the exact same. Oh. Okay. So like yeah. Well, Just, I know some people get it, some people don't. I get yeah, it all. I get it when I when I'm out with the dog. So <laughs> you know. Um, but, yeah. Uh, well, okay. So overall, this this past season um, compared to other seasons, and and be honest, you know, what, what how, how do you think? Like, there's been a lot of changes, and for me, it hasn't felt so different besides semifinal. Yeah. And there's. Obviously, there's a lot of mixed opinions out there. And it sounds like Discovery's doing a good job. Like, the coverage is pretty good. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, from the viewer side of things, it sounds like it's going the right way, which is good for the sport. Yeah. And it's a bit weird with semifinal and my, my take on it. Like, there's, like, two finals. And for spectators, if they don't really know the sport, they might be a bit confused. Like, yeah. well, there's another final after they just watched, watched one. Yeah. So, and, like, I like I liked it, like, last year, like, top 60 yeah. fi- for just one final. Yeah. But I see both sides, I guess. But with semifinal, I think it's a little bit weird and confusing. Uh, you're not you're not alone in that. Would you would you say if they got rid of semis that might? I mean, it, there's we have communication problems, you know, not getting schedules and stuff. Is this? Do you think it's? I mean, you've you've been at the, the top of the heap since you were young, dude. I mean, do you, do you think it's just growing pains and they'll figure it out or? or yeah, I think they'll figure it out. Like, first year, they're probably just kind of testing the waters and seeing what people like and don't like. Yeah. But I think they'll figure it out. Like, Discovery is obviously really dialed on so, all ends. Yeah. So I think 
I think like the next year or two, it's just going to get better. And hopefully they listen to what the riders think. And that's obvious. I think that's most important because they're the ones putting on the show. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll get better. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you, Chris, and wish you nothing but luck this Thank week. Thank you, Rice Cakes. Appreciate right. it. See ya. A lot of empty beers. I'm here with none other than Jim Bland. You know him. You love him. He's the jack of all trades over at the Union. Um, Jim, I just wanted to get your thoughts on how this season has gone for you and maybe comparison to previous season. Um, well, how's that gone? So for us this year, results-wise, it's been pretty mind-blowing, to be honest. Uh, obviously, we come in, we're a relatively small budget team with limited staff and yeah we're basically doing what we can with what we've got and yeah to see several top tens and junior wins and juniors on podiums and that kind of thing has been pretty insane yeah um so yeah can't ask for more from that really um especially given the testing schedule changes and yeah. random timings and stuff we've been given it's been like yeah a test but stoked with how it's gone so far so you've taken it in stride rather than than uh been complaining and that's it <laughs> yeah. that's it you can't change anything so all you can do is adapt to the situation and do your best so um yeah stokes really so but on a on another note how do you like has it affected you negatively at times during the season like yeah, you definitely it's definitely an emotional roller coaster at times. Right. Um, yeah, especially when you're responsible for several other people, like yeah. deciding what they're doing and figuring it out for yourself as well, so you can direct them as yeah. best as possible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been a test, but yeah, I'm one that tries to take the positives from it, and yeah, you can only do you can only make what you've got, so do your best sort of thing, and yeah, yeah, keep it going. Well, you've been one of the few that that's that's had that outlook, so I, I appreciate your candor on that. Um, how do you see, or what is, what will Jim Bland be doing next year? Can we can we talk about it, or if I knew myself, I would tell you. <laughs> um, but yeah, see how it goes. Um, yeah, the union's looking good for next year as well. So yeah, good. fingers crossed we can stay there and continue what we're doing, and yeah, keep surprising people. Keep getting some good uh, union um, clothes and. Uh, Sick, sick hits on track. That's it. Yeah, if we can do a merch plug here, there it is. You can buy your t-shirts. Help feed us next year. <laughs> yeah, you heard it, folks. Go and support the union because they are awesome. Jim, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Vital MT Beers. I have the pleasure of speaking with Austin Dooley, one of our uh, American uh, elite riders that's been doing nothing but just accelerating and coming up through the ranks and uh austin you've been on the circuit for how many years now this is my third year as an elite so i did this is my fifth fifth so yeah. five years doing world cup so the over the last from last year to this year um what's your experience been yeah the the world cup scene is definitely different this year with eso taking over um i feel like honestly honestly it's been pretty good like i feel like the the new course markings have been pretty dang sick like it looks a lot cleaner i feel yeah, yeah. um I've, I've been super happy with all the tracks all the tapings this year like they've they've done some good things i feel okay. um the broadcasting as far as that i feel like that's that's definitely gotten better from each race like there's been i feel like the boys were kind of learning the ropes i guess you could say in the yeah, beginning yeah. and i feel each race goes the camera angles get a bit better the talking gets a bit better um so that's been good and the format um yeah i guess it's different for sure well what well so how do you feel like i can't i think it, it almost feels like they're prepping us to go to the 30 rider yeah um what are your thoughts on that well uh to be honest i don't like it so much um right i prefer the 60 i mean i feel like last week and several times this year it showed that that you need the top 60 i mean yeah there's so many this is, the field is insane right now there's so many top guys that are going everyone's going so fast so yeah, yeah. i feel like they need to, to leave it open and i mean it's doable to keep it at 60 i feel like yeah 30 right now it's insane there's you can name over 30 guys that are going fast so yeah doing that is tough and yeah, I guess we'll see what they do next year, but I kind of hope they, they go back. It'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the hope for most people. Yeah. I'm trying to be as unbiased and, like, you know, get as unbiased opinions as possible, but yeah. right there is is a good example of how maybe they can improve in the future. Yeah, exactly. But, um, and look at, like, uh, 
I think Kolb is and Benoit. Those are two guys this year. They both won a world, their first World Cup this year. And you look at those boys. I think it took Benoit. I think he was saying he was at it eleven years. Wow. And I remember he was going, you know, just trying to qualify and then build each year. And I think Kolb has been kind of the same way. Yeah, a little less. So it's less like if time, they, if they had thirty, yeah. then then those boys might not be where right. they're at today. So, and you look at Oshin winning last week. He's yeah. been. I mean, he did amazing as a junior, but. You know, it's these. It's, it's it's open to anyone. So yeah, it's anybody's game. And like, so like, going at like, does that alter the course of like how you, like your preparation? Like I'm I'm assuming that you've had a pretty similar preparation for World Cups each year. Yeah. Like so, how does next year look? Like as of right now. Well, I think. Uh, I think now is how just how stacked it is. It's just you just gotta send your life. It's just every time you get on the bike, anytime there's a time run, you just gotta give it 110 percent because times are so tight right now. Yeah, it's more stacked than ever. So to get that good result and be in that top 30, you just send your life. Okay, Vital MT Beers. I'm here with Tyler Irving. Tyler is a uh, the epitome of what a privateer is. Uh, he's um, been doing the World Cups. How many years now, Tyler? Um, since my first year junior, so since 2019. 2019. So you have probably one of the most unique perspectives on just uh, changing over uh, from Red Bull to Warner Brothers. How did this past year go for you? Um, this year, it's been different. Like, the changes, I would say as a privateer, the schedule, like on race day, yep. is a lot harder. Like, if you break things, there's a lot less time to get it fixed, especially when... You're doing it yourself, yeah. trying to find a wheel, maybe borrow a wheel. Right. There's less time to figure all that out. But for the most part, it's fairly similar. Like, even with the former Red Bull stuff, they never made it super easy for privateers. Right. So there's not a huge change, but it's definitely a bit harder. Okay. That being said, what, what do you think could uh, help? help someone like you or other other people like you that want to give this thing a go but might not like be on a team or 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 be chris or whatever uh what would you what, what's the solution i don't know it's hard to it's hard to find a solution because yeah it's so hard especially with the level right now but and especially they're making it harder to enter these races yeah well, well that's, that's the rumor right uh, that's what i was gonna kind of try to get to later but what how does it look for next year is it is it did the, is it the same prices did you hear anything about that or i don't know anything about that but i've i mean it's harder to get points this year because yeah. last year if you qualified for top 60 that means automatically you got some points this year yeah even if you make it to semifinals you don't get points you get world cup standing points but not uci points yeah so that makes it harder to enter so you've got to go to other uci races to get those points which costs more money yeah and then travel to the world cup so do you think that's more feeder programs or feeder races in the u.s would help or yeah okay. i mean especially since it's harder to come to these races without points yeah there needs to be more races where you can get those points and i don't know if discovery wants to do that i think they want other people to do that yeah and not worry about it but as of right now there's not that so it's kind of hard okay so going on next year you still still planning on racing world cups yep yeah uh i've got points right now and gonna do a few races uh preseason next year yep. and still trying to do a full season of world cups next year all right well we wish you all the best of luck and of course we'll be watching thank you tyler thank you i'm with another unsung hero of our sport uh dave richards from maine uh Dave works very closely with Specialized um, here in the pits, uh, gets us set up in North America for Bruni and Finn and all those guys. Um, but Dave, I, I think you would have a unique perspective and I'd like to get your thoughts on how this past season was as a spectator and as somebody that helps out. Um, how did you think this year went uh, compared to previous years? Yeah, I think it's really interesting from my side because we do the support on the North American stop. So we're really a spectator and a fan watching them on TV as they're in Europe. Yeah. And we prepare for them coming over here for Snowshoe and Mount St. Anne. I think it it was 
really spectator friendly to watch it on TV, the semis and the finals. Um, but I also think it's really taxing on the riders because you're asking them to make double the, the race speed runs. And so uh, training becomes really, really important and, you know, being in the best shape you can. And then really quick turnaround times like last year uh in the old in the old setup it was like the riders would go and qualify on friday and then saturday yeah you know do some practice in their race run and that was it yeah and now this year you know we practice in the morning we've got semifinals, and then we're trying to get the athletes fed get bikes you know set up for the final run and it's just way way more hectic in the pits yeah but again i think it's it's really exciting for the spectators because oftentimes they're up on the hill they're down here in the pits watching all this chaos and and it's exciting for them yeah so with that being said um do you think that the new system is good do you do you do you enjoy it or is it is it just a new challenge for you or what yeah i think i think it's a it's a new challenge because preparation has to be spot on there's not a lot of time to to play with yeah um I think ultimately that the sanctioning body and the teams will have to get together and figure out what works best for them. And they have to take into consideration uh, everything from the spectators and then rider safety and and just make the best of it. And maybe it will be some hybrid of what we have now and what we had in the past. And it will just, I think the the promoter has done a really good job of kind of adapting as we go. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next year. Okay. And what does uh, Dave Richards have on the docket for uh, next Uh, year? It's, that's a good question. So we're, we're hearing of, uh, of a few different events. And, of course, we not only do we do Specialized Gravity and Factory uh, XC, yeah, um, GC, but, yeah. but, yeah, we do a little bit with GNCC. GNCC. We, do some, uh, we do some demo events, you know, your, your outer bikes and your, some of your bigger yeah. demo. Yeah. Uh, so it will be super busy. And uh, whatever the schedule turns up, that's, that's where you'll find us. Cool. Well, you heard it here, folks. Uh, Dave is kind of my neighbor. He lives an hour away from me in Maine, and that's neighbor territory. Uh, and he's just a great guy. If you uh, if you see him around the pits, give him a give him a handshake. He's done a lot for us. Thank you, Dave. Thank you.